Gilliman knew those times were brutal, and he believed the methods used too extreme. He had privately disapproved of some of what his so-called father had done, though in truth, even the worst atrocity was but what Gilliman himself had performed in Ultramar. The intent of an act of violence, he thought, was the same, whether a single murder or the destruction of a city resulted. During the Great Crusade, he had wholeheartedly accepted the Emperor's cruelties as a means to an end. What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist here, part of One Mind Syndicate, and today I'm back to talk about Warhammer 40k. In this one, I will be going over Gilliman's thoughts about the Great Crusade and the state of the Imperium. For the longest time, a lot of people wanted to know what the Primarchs think about what the Emperor has been doing, because for the most part, they tend to follow the Emperor blindly um, until the Great Crusade happened, and that's the schism that tore apart the Imperium and led to great wars across the galaxy. So here we see the thought process behind Gilliman, the Primarch of the Ultramarines, and currently one of two Loyalist Primarchs that have been defending the Imperium that the Emperor fought so hard to protect. So the excerpt that I'm going to be reading from comes from the novel God Blight, and it takes place inside of a really old, decrepit, Nurgle-infested battle barge, and Gilliman is kind of just thinking to himself as he's walking through here the thoughts of the Great Crusade. So oftentimes a lot of people want to know who's the strongest Primarch, who would win in a fight, who punchy the hardest, essentially. But today we're looking at it in a more diplomatic morality sense. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into this 40k lore. Gilliman strode through the halls where no loyal man had trodden for millennia, and he wondered if he had walked this way before. The ship was ancient, the design dating back to before the Great Crusade. Although naturally that did not mean that the ship was old, time flowed differently in the warp so it was possible that the craft had served under the Emperor's banner long ago. Had it perhaps been the flotilla that arrived at Barbarus with the Emperor, bearing the first of the Legion, then known as the Dusk Raiders, to meet their father? Had it taken the message of the Imperial Truth to the Forgotten Worlds? Had it been joyously received by the scattered scions of humanity? Or had it forced compliance on those who had rejected the Emperor's dream of brotherhood. Gilliman had known that those times were brutal, and he believed that the methods used were too extreme. He had privately disapproved of some of what his so-called father had done, though in truth even the worst atrocity was but what Gilliman himself had performed in Ultramar, writ large. The intent of an act of violence, he thought, was the same, whether a single murder or the destruction of a city resulted. During the Great Crusade, he had wholeheartedly accepted the Emperor's cruelties as a means to an end. And yet, the worlds burned, civilizations wiped from existence, alien species driven to extinction, so much death to achieve peace. And then came the heresy. The truth of what the Emperor had withheld was thrown in his face. Even during the Crusade, Gilliman had wrestled with his conscience. He had argued with his brothers as the morality of their actions. He had disagreed with some of the methods. Some of them, like the monstrous curs, he had openly despised. But when he walked these corridors, dripping with ooze and unnatural decay, these spaces that held the atmosphere against the laws of physics, when he saw what had been done to the domain of the Emperor, what had been done to the own kingdoms of Ultramar, he thought all those methods just. Wherever this ship went now, it would never be greeted with joy. It would never be seen as a liberator or a bringer of safety. Whether its shadow fell across the worlds of mankind or Xenos, it had nothing to offer but cargoes of pain, corruption, disease, and decay. Perhaps nothing should be ruled out in the end. Perhaps no deed was too dark to hold back the horror that chaos brought. There were no ethics, no morals, nothing. Nothing that could be sacrificed to preserve the species, 
to ensure mankind survived against the odds. Maybe that was what Gilliman had not understood before. He was beginning to think he understood it now, though it burned his soul to accept it. Theoretical. The Emperor had been right, after all, about everything. The Eldari, the Necrons, the rest of the galaxy's thinking beings, they were worse than men by far. The Eldari insisted that they were mere moral, more sophisticated, while half of them manipulated every being they could to ensure the smallest advantage, while the other half cravenly offered the suffering of innocence to save themselves. All of them were equally arrogant. The Necrons took another route, worse in its way, that of a soulless existence, and yet the technology they employed might save them all, according to Belisarius' call. He thought to times he had raised his concerns and had them soothed away. The Emperor had made impassioned cases for the unity of humanity, for the rediscovery of lost might and technology. He had never mentioned chaos, not even once. Gilliman thought he understood that, for a brutal galaxy demanded a brutal regime to keep it safe. Chaos would always offer an escape from oppression, tempting the vast and teeming herds of humanity to run from the one thing that kept the nightmares away, straight into their arms. Theoretical. The Emperor had intended this phase to be temporary. Instead, it had persisted since his internment upon the Golden Throne. Practical. It was up to him to set that right. A normal man can accomplish a dozen things at once. A great man can accomplish a thousand, he thought, recalling the worlds of his foster father, Conor, had said to him. But no man, no matter his ability or his will, can accomplish more than one grand scheme at a time. His thoughts strayed to the Codex Imperialis, sitting unfinished in his scriptorium. One thing at a time, Roboots. My lord, Colkin asked. Nothing, said Gilliman. Yet he thought he could not afford to tarry. And there you have it, guys. This was the excerpt from the novel Godblight, giving us an insight into a Primarch's thoughts on the whole Great Crusade and the, and the overall dealings of the Emperor. So we can see here that Gilliman didn't approve of everything that the Emperor did. He saw it too strict, too powerful, too greedy. Um, but that is kind of what was needed at the time, and he knows this. Seeing where the Imperium currently is, after the effects of the whole Horus heresy, he knows that what the Emperor was doing was kind of the right thing, except for one, and that is chaos. Chaos was always persisting in the back of all the events that the Emperor was trying to do. Um, like he said here, a good man can only do so much, and the Emperor was doing so much and more, but at the end of the day, no one man can achieve everything they set out to do and have everything go according to plan. And plans fail, plans fall apart, and that's what happened to the Emperor's Imperium. So now Gilliman is here to pick up the pieces, to kind of set things straight, to achieve the Imperium that his father always wanted. And now, in the 42nd millennium, I believe we're currently in that timeline now, we have another Primarch entering the fray, and that is none other than the Lion, Lionel and L. Johnson. So hopefully we get more lore, more novels to see what the Lion thinks about the state of the Imperium currently, and what these two Primarchs will achieve working together. Thank you guys for listening, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you guys want to support us here at One Mind Syndicate, subscription, a like, a share, commenting down below will help us a ton. But if you want to go the extra mile, you can support us here on YouTube through a Super Tanks, or you can go to our Patreon page and pledge a simple dollar a month, and that'll help us bring you more 40k videos each and every day. And that's all I got for you guys today. So it's been the Sound Alchemist, part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>